Okay. There. Ready to go now. Two numbers that multiply. You need a piece of paper and a pencil. You need to be writing this down so you can reference it later when I give you the homework page. Okay. Two numbers that multiply to give 24, but when you add them together, you get 10. I tried to choose a medium. Is that right? Do you need help? Yeah, my pencil won't sharpen. Uh-huh. It. My pencil won't sharpen. No whining on the video. That's sharpen. Two numbers. When you multiply them together, you get 24. But when you add them together, you get 10. What are these two numbers? Six and four. Okay, now listen. As the lesson goes on, that's going to be the main mathematical issue is can I find the two numbers that when I multiply them together, I get something, which the question will tell you. I'm telling you, the question will tell you what it's got to multiply to. Shh. But when you add them together, you get something else. Some people, their multiplication tables are at least good enough that just with a second, you know, they close one eye and they're like, uh, eight, seven, seven, seven eight. They, they can do it, okay? But if your multiplication tables aren't good enough, a calculator can really help you. You go, okay, what adds to 10? Let's see, one and nine adds to 10. Does that multiply to 24? No, it doesn't. Two and eight, that, that adds to 10. Does that multiply to 24? You probably mentioned your calculator. No, it doesn't work. Three and seven, no, that's not right. Four and six, and eventually you get to it. So you gotta persevere here with these. I tried to keep the numbers reasonable in your homework, but I can't protect you from it always. Sometimes they'll be pretty big numbers, but I have a gift for you. So if you're sitting there right now going, Mr. Ta, this is exactly the kind of thing that drives me crazy about math. I can come up with them, but I, they're just not all in my head. I've got a gift for you. It's not a calculator. It's better. It's better than a calculator this time. You'll see when you get your homework sheet. But during the lesson, we'll fight through it, okay? We'll fight with it until I get you that weapon, okay? This is the big mathematical issue. Any questions so far? Okay, here's my second warm-up example. Expand. X plus 3, X plus 5. This is three days ago now. And maybe you're not good at this, so I'm going to do it two different ways. We need this. It's not going away. Can't just ignore it and say, oh, I wasn't here that day, or oh, I didn't get it. We're going to need this. What are the two ways? At least help me identify the two different ways you could do this. Jackson. I know there's something to do with negative. Oh, that's the zeros. If I was looking for zeros of this thing, he's so right, then it would be negative 3 and negative 5. But this said expand it. All right? Would you expand like x plus 3 instead of x minus 3? That's the zeros thing again. That's the zeros thing again. I know, I know, why the, I know what the problem is. Do you know what the problem is? This is the day I checked this homework and nobody had anything done. So we don't know how to do it. So here I am back teaching it again. It's, it's back. Here's the first way. Does this ring a bell at all? The box method. Sometimes people call it window method. Without this, you won't be able to do, there's every second question in the homework asks you to do this. But if you find this difficult, one of you came to the math help room on, what's today? Friday. Friday. This person came on Thursday, didn't understand this at all, wanted to understand it better. Within about eight minutes, they're like, oh, I totally get that now. So take that eight minutes right now. Zone in and go, okay, this is back, I better figure this out. If I'm doing x plus 3 times x plus 5, I put an x and a 3 down there because it said x plus 3, so I put that down one side of the box. And then the other one's x plus 5, and I'm going to put this 
on the other side of the box. And then your job is just to multiply to find each box. Now I'm not going to do it the same order I did the other day. I'm going to try and convince you of what actually has to happen here. I'm going to do this box down the bottom right first. Because that box is 3 times 5. 15. And if you have trouble with these, I suggest you start down there. You go, okay, I know what's going on here now. I'm just multiplying these things together. 5 and 3 is 15. This one, actually even easier. 3 times x, you don't got to do anything there. 3 times x is 3x. That box is actually pretty easy as long as you have faith in your algebra and go, okay, 3 times x is 3x. How about this one? This one's 5 times x. 5x. Now we need x squared. Okay, so maybe that's not so bad. I'm overselling that. So the answer to this is x squared plus 8x plus 15. I skipped a step on purpose. Please, please look at this and go, where in the world did he get 8 from? I put the 5x and the 3x together. They were the same type of terms, so I went ahead and added them together. In the homework that you didn't do for this, <laughs> you might have written it out. You might have wrote 5x plus 3x and then added them. I said, I want to draw these boxes. See, some people love these boxes. They're like, oh, this is good. I like doing algebra like this. It really is visual, and I can see what's going on. The other way, the other way to do this is what's called foil. And you write it out this way, and you draw arrows. What's x times x? x squared. What's x times 5? Five? 5x. Five what's 3 times x? This is just like foil. This is foil. Foil, this is called. Why are we doing this again? We need it for this lesson, yeah? Doing this again. None of you did your homework. What do you mean, again? We, didn't, we never did it the first time. <laughs> hey, look, though. Hey, it's a good day. Got the right shoes on. These are my teaching shoes. Do you see how it's the same thing? I don't care which way you do it, whichever one you like. And I mean that for grade 10, and I also mean it for grade 11. All the way through, when you see these expand ones, you can do foil or you can do box method. I'll tell you the secret though. Most people that do box a lot, eventually they just look at it and they start doing foil automatically. Okay? Let's look on the boards. Look here on the boards. Look at This is grade 12 university math. Look what they're doing. Two brackets, just like we're doing. Is there one over here? Yeah, look at it. Right over there. See, I'm using my laser pointer. Right over there. Same stuff. Same stuff. Oh, grade 11. I was helping somebody in grade 11. Oh, look at that one. A grade 11 university math. Look at here. This is what you were talking about here, the zeros. Let's find the zeros there. Huh? It's good. It's good. It's all over the board. I didn't set this up. I didn't make it look, I didn't make it, the boards look like that for you to come in, but it is neat to see that. Okay, that was called warm-up. More warm-up, I called it. All of that to get ready for this next question. Okay. Is there a way to shortcut this? Look at the 5 and 3 and look at the final answer. Where did the 5 and 3 end up? They ended up in two different spots. This became, this was 5 plus 3. What about the 15? Five times, three. Five times three. That's how this warm up relates to the earlier warm up. I can jump right to the end if I wanted to. I'm not, go I'm not going to. I have a different question for you. Did you copy down the title, by the way? It's factoring trying always. You know what? Math is like this. Sometimes the title, the title should be at the end of the lesson. You first seen it, I, I, I don't even know what a trinomial is. I don't know what factoring is. Why are you putting that title up there? I'm like, oh, that's what I'm going to teach today. Here? But you need that title now. So if you forgot to copy the title down, go back to the top of your page and write down factoring trinomials. That's what I'm teaching today, factoring trinomials. But at this point in the lesson, it's like, I don't know what factoring is. I don't know what trinomials are. I don't know what's going on here. That's right. 
Still need this? Still need this? Here we go. Here's the question of the day. It's the only question of the day. This is the same question I'm going to do over and over and again. I'm going to do this. Here we go. Two exclamation marks. Here we go. Boom. <laughs> Ready? Somebody did a homework question. They did their expanding homework that you didn't do, and they came up with this answer. I'm going to make it small numbers. Very easy. They came up with x squared plus thinking carefully to make the numbers nice and easy for you. Four X plus three. Shh. Very small numbers. So we're not hung up by the numbers, just the process. My question is, what was the question? What did they multiply out and end up with x squared plus 4x plus 3? There was two brackets. And they multiplied it out and got x squared plus 4x plus 3. What was in the brackets? Can you just read those okay? Maybe the red and the orange is no good. Let me say it again. This is the only question of the day. I mean, I might do it with different numbers after this, but this is the only thing I'm teaching today, how to get back to what it was. I'm going to rewind the lesson here, those of you who are watching this. Wait, do you know? Are you going to take a shot at it? Yeah. Oh, okay, well, hold on, hold on. Once you answer, if you get it wrong, I'm going to help. If you get it right, I've got to find out what you're thinking so everybody else can go, oh, I, I see what he did there. What do you think it was? Hold on, hold on. That is giant. That is huge. Let's we'll stop there for a second. How do you know there's going to be an x in each one? Because there's this x squared. This x squared is a giant hint. It's like there must have been an x and an x. So they're off to a great start already. That this must have been x and x in the brackets. Okay, good. Now tell me. Hold on. He's all over this. He, he might not even know how all over it he is. He said, to get 3, this must have either been 1 times 3 or 2 times 2. Now, you notice I kept the numbers. No, what, what, what did you say? Four. To get 4. Sorry, you did this one. Yeah, he either went, this is either 1 plus 3 or 2 plus 2. Those are the only possibilities. The, the easier because I kept the numbers smaller. So if you're worried about big numbers, don't worry. I've got help coming. But for small numbers... Those are the only two possibilities. Okay, now go. Uh, for three, only maybe get to play. I don't know. Maybe okay, let's talk about that for a second. Let's rewind and go back to something Joseph said a second ago. He said, they add to this, but multiply to this. So he's picked off one and three and two and two. One of those pairs, when you multiply them, you get three. Which of these pairs? Oh, three times one. One times three. That's three. It was x plus one and x plus three. Good. Amazing. He picked apart 90% of it. He's like, oh, this is what I got to do. Now, if you're like, oh, I just got to work this out. I just got to figure out what these numbers are. Yeah, that's all. But let's check because some of you didn't do your, some of you, most of you didn't do your expanding homework. Let's check if it's right. Let's vote on this one. Am I going to do foil or do you want to see me do the box method? You like box method better? Me too. If you're having any trouble with this, let's do a box method. Let's see if we're right. Remember, we were trying to figure out what was the question. Let's see. We think it was x plus 1 and x plus 3. That's what we think it was. Let's check each box. x times x. What's x times x? 2x. x2. Uh, x2, yeah, it's not 2x. X to the power 2. x to the power 2. So far, it looks right, yeah? We're looking pretty good. X times 3, 3x, and then 1 times x, 1x. Are we feeling pretty good? 
That's 4x. And then 1 times 3? Three? 3. Yes. Folks, let me say it again. That is the only question of the day. I'm going to do that a bunch. But now I'm just going to add a couple words. This is where I'm going to try and be brief. In purple. Factor. When we go that way, we're calling it factoring, not expanding. When we go this way, this is called expand. You're getting more terms when you expand. When you factor, you're getting to things multiplied together. Last thing, how many terms were over here? There was an x squared, a 4x, and a 3. Three terms, we call that a trinomial. Have you heard the word tri, any, or that, that prefix before, tri? Triangle, three sides. Tricycle, three wheels. Trinomial, three terms. That's why it's called factoring trinomials. We're trying to go backwards, and we're doing it with trinomials. Whew. Less than over. No, I, no I'm going to keep going. I'm gonna try, all I'm going to do now is try with other numbers. Okay. I'm going to go slightly bigger on the next one. Slightly bigger numbers to see who's out there and who remembers. After I switch pages, who remembers what i got to come up with here? Do you need more time here? I forgot my water. I'm so thirsty. Need more time here? <laughs> Examples. I've switched to like a purple here. X squared factor x squared plus, what am I going to do? Uh, I'm going to do um, 11x plus 18. You see, I've gone to bigger numbers now. Not out of sight just yet. I'll do an out of sight one, and then I'm going to give you my gift after, after I do the out of sight one. A gift that makes, those of you who are multiplication tables isn't great, then I'll show you my gift that I have for you that you're going to love. All right. If I'm factoring, I'm going back to two sets of brackets. I'm doing the opposite of expanding. Are you going to give me the whole answer, or are you going to be part of the answer? Okay, as you give me the whole answer, give it to me slowly, okay? So that everybody can go, I see where you're getting that. So what goes first in each bracket? X. x and x. We at least know that's going to be true. And how do we know that's going to be x times x? What is it about the question? x squared. Okay, so we got that part. Now, let me ask you this. You think you got the numbers? Yeah. You think you know what it is? Okay. How did you investigate? What did you think about as you went after the two numbers? Um, 18 divided by 2. Oh, he's going to, he went the other way. Some people will look at the 11 and go, what adds to 11? And they'll work from the 11 to the 18. Some people who are a little bit better at their multiplication tables might go after the 18. That's what you did. He looked at that, and you skipped over one, but he jumped right to, I'm going to write them up here. You could have done 1 times 18. You didn't, or you did it so fast you decided that wasn't the 1. But then you did 2 times 9, and that was enough. You went, it's 2 and 9. Because you went, oh, this is 2 plus 9. That's the 1. 2 and 9. Oh, I could have put the 9 here and the 2 there. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which order you put them in. It would still fall out to the same. Oh, let me say it again. I'm not teaching anything else today. That's it. I'm just going to use different numbers. I'm just going to play around with the numbers. I'm going to do one right underneath here so you can see that one. Because seeing the other ones helps here. Factor. Big numbers. Big numbers. Big numbers. Okay, some big numbers. Um, how about x squared plus 15x plus 56? It's getting real now. Think it over. Break out your calculator and go, hmm, multiply it to 56, add it to 15, <laughs> and then I'll get my gift for you. Wherever I put it, I, and I now forget where I put it in my big folder here. Oh, me found it. I found it. Oh, you're going to love this. I found it on the internet. Todd, it just looks like a homework sheet. I don't know why you're so happy about this. 
When you get it, flip it over. You already got it? Yeah. So don't flip the sheet over. Do yourself a favor. Don't flip the sheet over. Don't flip it over. If you can't come up with the numbers, flip this sheet over. Because I don't really, as it turns out, I don't really care how good your multiplication tables are at this particular moment. What I care about is you know what you're looking for and how to find it. So if you've got the numbers, great. Don't flip the sheet over. Don't use it as a, a, an aid. If you can't get the numbers or they don't come to you, then flip this sheet over. What do you see there? It's a multiplication chart. Look through there and find 56. Do you see a 56 in there anywhere? Once you find it, what two numbers multiply to 56? 7 and 8. In this particular question, that's the only 56 I see out there. Is there questions where there might be another combination? Yeah, I'll do that one like that in a second. But it was 7 and 8. Are 7 and 8 the right ones? Those of you who could do it without the multiplication table? Yes, 7 and 8 were the right ones. Let's try another one. Let's try another one. Don't flip over your chart unless you have to, okay? I want to find something where it's out there a couple of times. Take a minute. Take a minute right now. This is the whole lesson right here in this, in this moment. Take a minute, look through that chart, try and find 36, but then see if your two numbers that you find add to 15. If they don't add to 15, it's not the right two numbers. If you do them in your head without flipping it over, great. You're going to be faster at these. That's wonderful. I'm, I'm happy for you. But if, you're, if that's not really your deal, then just flip the t thing over. 12 and 3. You just look through until you find the pair that multiplies and, uh, to, multiplies and adds. Yes? 12 and 3. I only have one last thing to show you. What about negatives? You know what's coming. And I divide your homework. If you look at your homework sheet at the front, do you notice how what I did? I very carefully said, Factory trinomial, positive numbers only. So you go A, B, C, D, E, F, only positives. But then the negatives come at you, okay? So I'm going to do one or two with negatives, okay? Do you need more time here? Factor. Some negatives. X squared plus 6X minus 16. This will change our strategy slightly. Look through till you find 16. Don't, don't look for negative 16. Look for 16. And then look at the two numbers and say, is there a way for these to add to give 6 if one of them's negative? Take a minute. And if you were doing them in your head a second ago, maybe, maybe flip to the chart. Look around and see where 16 is. And see if the two numbers that multiply to 16, if there's a way that they can add to 6 as long as I make one negative. I need a negative in there somewhere. Um, so what does multiply to 16? What did you find? Two and, uh, eight. <laughs> he was too good. Other people might have, might have found 4 and 4, yes? 4 and 4 is out there, but 4 and 4 have no way to get to 6. But 8 and 2 do, as long as one of them is negative. So then the two brackets you got to do, you got to go x plus 8 and x minus 2. 8 and negative 2 multiply to negative 16, but 8 and negative 2 add to give only 6. The only other question in the homework asks you to check. So I'm going to check this one. And I'm going to do it both ways because I'm almost done. Here's what the check looks like. You could do it with the box. X plus 8, X minus 2. Let's see if it's right. What's X times X? X to the power of 2. X to the power of two. 8 times X? 
Negative 2 times x? This was the homework, by the way, that you avoided. This is all that homework was asking you to do. Friends. And negative 2 times 8? Is it right? 8 minus 2 is 6, negative 16. Okay, you could also do with FOIL. You can do with FOIL as long as you write down right. Sorry, I wrote down the wrong numbers there. Just a second. x plus 8, x minus 2. Let's see if it's right. Here comes FOIL. Multiply the first ones together, x squared. Multiply the outside ones together, negative 2x. Multiply the inside ones together, 8x. And multiply the last ones together, negative 16. It's right. So that's what it says. When it says check, that's what it means, is check them. Now, I didn't give you the answers on the worksheet on purpose because I know you really love to just copy the answers and go, there, I did my homework. You're going to have to come get your sheet checked with me. Or, or, hey, it checks itself. You just got to multiply it out and see, and then you get to practice. So those of you who are like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't do the homework the other day, Ms. Todd. But I'm going to do these checks, and then I'll sort of know how to do box method. I, I love that. 